Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> Casey Duranco here with Go Keto with Casey, where I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. First of all, I did something I've never done before, which is I put a, a poll in here. And usually I, I, when I go live, I see comments. Can someone let me know that you can see and hear me? If someone would type something, I don't know whether the poll is interfering with me viewing the chat. If so, I will stop the poll. So I'm going to keep talking as if you can hear me. Uh, today's topic, oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. So, um, and I'm going to make this bigger so I can read more easily. If you are new here, um, please be aware of any technical issues that may go on because they do happen. Gremlins. And this poll I did was talking about, asks about um, if your doctor, your medical provider approves of you following the ketogenic protocol, if indeed you are. And can all of you see the poll? Can you all see it? I'm curious. I've never done this before. So anyway, today's topic, keto and doctors. I was originally going to title it keto versus doctors, but that sounded a little too aggressive because there are plenty of medical providers who are in favor of a low carb ketogenic protocol. They suggest their patients follow it to help alleviate symptoms of things like arthritis, type 2 diabetes, not eliminate symptoms of type 2 diabetes, reverse type 2 diabetes, uh, impact acid reflux. They're, they're a, a, a broad spectrum of conditions, diseases, and irksome things that happen to the human body that can be attributed to inflammation, and inflammation is exacerbated by glucose, and carbs make glucose in our bodies. So there you are. For those of you who don't know, the ketogenic protocol is one whereby you reduce your carbohydrate intake to a point where um, where a tr something that Trish just wrote, no, there should be several responses that you can, I don't know. I There should be, yeah, it's a one question poll with four responses. Okay, there you go. Where you reduce your carbohydrate intake to the point where your liver is not flooding your system with glucose, sugar. And when that is reduced, our body says, whoa, glucose, no more. Let me see. Let me turn to burning fat for fuel, which it is happy to do and can do very well. And we all have body fat. So uh, think of all of your body fat as your future you a fuel expenditure. It keeps you going. It's literally like having a, you know, a giant tank following you around behind your car, making sure you never run out. So that's what it is. Many people, many medical providers are stuck in what they learned in medical school. First of all, most medical providers will tell you that they don't get nutrition training in medical school, not even like one course, one semester. And they're, they're taught about tests. And, but one thing that's taught, I don't know if it's still being taught, is that one thing, our body requires, we must eat carbs in order to keep our brain functioning. Nah, not really. That fruits and vegetables can be eaten in unlimited quantities. That if you eat red meat, fatty meats, that you're gonna, your cholesterol will go up and you will die of a heart attack. These are just incorrect things. And But some doctors really cannot get off that mode of thinking. That's what they were taught, and dadgummit, they're not going to learn one new thing. They'll learn all about new um, pharmaceutical products, if you know what I'm saying. By the way, hashtag Casey's Pink Drink. I'm asked every single time. I will no longer be giving the information in when I respond to comments under YouTube because it's been done too many times. Glass, full of ice, mostly diet tonic water, a splash of diet cranberry, and a squeeze of lime. That's it. 
Okay. So do many doctors are trained how to prescribe medications. Brought this up before. When I take my dog Jack for to the vet, not because there's any problem with Jack or anything, just for annual checkup, get his, you know, his heartworm medicine renewed and all that. What are you feeding Jack? And I tell them I feed Jack food that I make. I make homemade pet food, and it is ketogenic, by the way. Um, great. What is the? Has anyone ever had their doctor ask? What do you eat? They'll tell you what not to eat, but they won't ask you what you are eating. Often. Often that's the case. So this poll is all, here are the answers, uh, the uh, options on the poll. Uh, the question is, does your doctor support you following the ketogenic protocol? The answers can be yes, no, I haven't told them I'm doing it, and they're skeptical but okay with it. Right now, the leading answer is, I haven't told them I'm doing it. And that's probably okay. And since they're probably never going to ask you what you eat, you don't have to fess up. Here's, here's something. I have a two-pronged issue with some medical providers. Not all. Some. And I would not include our GP. My husband and I go to the same doctor. I would not include her in this group. Some don't want to learn a new thing. And if you're not going to follow what they prescribe, they fire you as a patient. And some may say, okay, that's great. You've lost 25 pounds, but it's not sustainable. I have a real problem with that, with that second one. Why would a doctor say, I'm really glad you've lost 35 pounds and your blood pressure is down and you know, you know, your blood sugar is regulated. Good, but you'll never be able to keep it up. It's not sustainable. There can be myriad reasons why a medical professional would do that, would say that. One might be they're projecting. They're projecting that they would not sustain it. You know what I'm saying? Would it, if you gave up cigarettes and you resolved your COPD and your emphysema and your hacking cough, and you don't need nicotine patches and you're feeling great, would your doctor say, well, that's great. You've overcome all those things, but it's not sustainable to quit cigarettes or alcohol, or, you know, I'm really glad you're off the opioids, but it's really not sustainable. Obviously, carbohydrate is not heroin. But carbohydrate, like heroin, is not essential to one's life. We can create, through gluconeogenesis, all the glucose we need by eating fatty sources of protein. So here's the protocol. Keep your carbohydrate intake 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net. If it's not on page four, link below, don't eat it, but you don't even need a food page. It's fatty sources of protein, some full fat dairy in limited amounts if you can tolerate it. And if you want them but not required, some non-starchy vegetables and some leafy greens in limited quantities. That's it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. The third thing is the hardest followed by the fourth thing, which is the second hardest, because we are habituated to eating all the time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can minimize this poll. I'll keep it open. We've had 74 responses. This is very interesting. So most of you are not simply not telling your, your doctor, your medical provider, that you're doing this. And, and I wonder, I should, you know, follow-up question, are you not telling because you haven't seen your doctor or because mom's the word, I don't want to hear the lecture, I'm happy with what I'm doing? So how do we talk to our medical providers if they give us pushback? I'll tell you what I did. I am not a medical provider, nor am I a researcher, nor am I a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a whatever. I can only talk about my experiences and my understanding of the protocol. My personal experience with our medical provider, for those of you who don't know my story, I was morbidly obese for 30 years, from my mid-20s to my mid-50s. And many would say the best years of my life, I was morbidly obese. Spoiler alert, I'm living the best years of my life right now. And I'm not saying that just to say it. It's the truth. So those of you who think too old, forget about it. 
I've been doing this for seven years. Do the math. I'm 63, seven and a half years. I'm 63. Best years of my life right now. Anywho, I was morbidly obese for 30 years. I tried, I tried, I tried. You can see my some before photographs that are not even at my heaviest at my blog, caseydoranger.com, link below. I tried. I tried the triathlons. I tried going to the gym. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. I gave up. I was miserable inside my own head. I have a wonderful life. I have a wonderful family. My lovely mate is supportive of anything I've ever done. I was miserable inside my own head because I didn't feel well physically and I didn't feel well e-mentally, which is a mashup of emotionally and mentally. I was talking one morning before coffee and that's what came out. But I didn't, and I, I knew what was going to happen. The next medic, next checkup with my doctor was going to be, uh, we need to talk about you getting on some meds because your blood sugar is now just too high and your blood pressure is a problem and you're morbidly obese and everything hurts. So in my medical record, which we can see online and have been able to for years, after the, after my most recent checkup before I started keto, the doctor wrote, Casey continues to struggle with her weight, which was accurate. I continue to recommend a low-fat diet and more exercise. So that is the prescription all of us have gotten, correct? Have we not all heard that? Move more, eat less, low-fat. And then we get fatter and fatter and fatter. Trying. We try to do it, and we get fatter. So I, on January 8, 2014... I realized that I was probably going to have to have that insulin conversation. I did not want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I came across the white coat video of Dr. Eric Westman of Duke University, who I'm thrilled to say is now a friend of mine. And it's if you haven't seen it, see it. It's, it's a classic. And he just said, keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer. It's not on page four. Don't eat it. And only eat when you're hungry. I turned that into don't eat if you're not hungry. Because I, I wanted to hear don't eat before eat, right? That's my own thing. Anywho, so I thought, well, I, I can do that. I, I Man, I was miserable. So the next time I ate, I just laid off the carbs. I didn't wait for the next Monday or the first of the next month or after the holiday or after a birthday. or It was a Wednesday afternoon. And the next time I ate, I laid off the carbs. And honest to goodness, I never looked back. So fast forward, uh, some time later, three or four months later, I go for my annual. And my doctor, oh my gosh, you've lost 25 pounds. That's fantastic. How did you do that? What are you doing? I said, I'm doing the absolute opposite of everything you told me. To her credit, she's a good person, nice person. She said, oh? I, I said, I'm just laying off the carbs. She went like this, oh, you're doing low carb, aren't you? I, I am. That's great. I'm glad you've lost weight, but I'm really worried about your cholesterol. I said, I know you are. It's not your fault. You were taught the wrong thing, but I'm not worried. So let's do a special lipid profile this year because I was feeling pretty cocky. I'd lost probably about 25 pounds at that point. And excuse me, I'm probably glistening. It's all the doors and windows are open and it's about 92 degrees. We don't have the AC on yet. And I'm not going to complain because I know some of you are burning up. So good wishes to those of you in the Southwest. I'm in the mid-Atlantic states and it's it's hot here. Um, I said, I want to do an NMR, a full lipid profile. Okay. So we did it. And on the next medical record, <laughs> she wrote, uh, Casey, these are excellent numbers. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. The only thing is your blood sugar is a little low, but that's okay. My blood sugar was like 64. And she wrote, to her credit, your overall cholesterol number is a bit high, but that's because your HDL is so high. Keep in mind that the overall cholesterol number 
is just a it's a mathematical equation. It is not actually someone counting cholesterol. And keep in mind that every cell in the human body requires cholesterol. Every single cell requires cholesterol. And there are like four, at least four types of cholesterol, probably more. There's triglyceride, HDL, which is high density lipoprotein, two types of LDL. So when someone says your LDL, the bad cholesterol is really high, which, which LDL? Because there are two types. One is benign, one is not so benign. Doctors, here's the thing. I have a problem with doctors telling people, it's great that you're doing it, but it's not sustainable. Says who? Says you? Well, read a book. And I have problems with doctors that the fact that we know more about cholesterol than they do. Some of them. We know more. Some of us know more than some of them. And they're medical doctors. I've had more than one person tell me they have taken in a copy of The Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Living to their doctor. If you're unfamiliar with the book, highly recommend. Written by doctors Stephen Finney and Jeff Volick. You can find that under my list of references at my blog. It's the book that explained why I was not crazy. Why when I was trying to eat low-fat and I would eat my heart-healthy low-fat breakfast at 8 and then at 10.30, I've got to get some more food. There's a reason for that. It's not because I was a glutton. It was, there was a reason. So here's, here's what I decided for myself. That ultimately I was in charge of my health care. I mean, if, you know, if I have a disease and I need a specific medication for something, or if I break my arm, yes, okay. But ultimately I'm in charge of the decision-making. People say, I don't know what to do. My doctor's putting me on statins. Mm, well, your doctor can prescribe statins. You don't have to take them if you don't want to. Do some research. S some people just will do whatever their medical provider says. And we've kind of been trained for that. You know, just, yes, they're the doctor. Th they're not omnip omnipotent. Right? They, they're not wizards. They can make mistakes. And that's, but it's our decision. So we don't need to, you know, we don't need to go to bend a knee and kiss the ring of a medical provider. Some of them are great. Many of them are great. Excellent intentions. Spent years getting trained. But this one, one piece, this one piece, this nutrition piece, simply not being taught. Or at least it wasn't. I mean, the last I heard it wasn't. So I decided, and, and that exchange that I described with, with our doctor, that's almost pretty much exactly the way it was, word for word and inflection for inflection. Now I go, I went, it was like two years since I had had a checkup. I went for my annual. She said, oh, that's great. You're still doing the, yes, yeah, I am. She says, okay, you know what? Everything, everything is perfect. You don't even need to come back on an annual basis. You know, maybe a couple of years. Okay. And keep in mind, with respect, we can, you know, voice our opinion to other people. We don't have to be belligerent about it. Think about how you might impact your medical provider, whether it's a GP, a PA, whatever. You might, you might change someone's thinking. And that person may go on to influence 5,000 people. You never know. So don't be fearful of the naysayers who are claiming that you're going to... It's, it's too broad a topic to try to talk about the whole cholesterol thing and the heart hypothesis, cardiovascular. It's, it's very broad, and I'm happy to talk about it in a specific way. But right now, broadly, we are in charge of our medical care to a degree. Now, you can't, you, glibly, someone might say, well, find another doctor. Not everyone can do that. Some people's insurance coverage really prescribes which practices they can go to, which, wh how, what coverage they have. So 
So we can't just say, oh, fire that doctor, go to another one. So, but ultimately no one's going to jam a pill down my throat. If it's one I don't believe in and I know that I don't need. And no one's going to convince me that this is not sustainable because I've been doing it for, let me see, June, February, March, April, May, June, almost seven and a half years. And I've never been healthier. Even when I was younger and thinner, I wasn't as strong as I am now. By the way, check out the arms. And I'm going to do a, I know some, um, I'm going to see if I can get this smaller. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn my attention to the comments. I really appreciate you guys showing up. I uh, do want to take a moment, Shameless Commerce Division, with a uh, nod of the head to the car talk guys. A magnet. Uh, you don't have to buy one thing to be 100% successful on the ketogenic diet. Not one thing. And certainly don't need to buy products that say keto on them because they're not. But I will. I'm trying to earn my keep around here. I've got magnets. You can find these at my blog. Are you out of hunger or out of habit? It's a picture of a fridge. And if hunger's not the problem, food is not the solution. And then also at my blog, a spiral version of Go Keto with Casey's 12-month record book. I purposely did not put dates in here. Like I said, I started on a Wednesday on the 8th of the month. And I started that day. And so it's it's got quotes and habit trackers and mood trackers and coloring book, coloring pages. This is the spiral version, which really is better for writing in. But if you don't want that a couple of dollars cheaper, you get it faster. At Amazon, you can find this. It's the perfect bound version, exactly the same book. And a steel water bottle. I really love this. It says, go keto with Casey. And I buy these. I mean, I, I bought all these things. And then some little funny images. And then like t-shirts. This just says, GKWC, go keto with Casey. It's a racer back. Shirt sure. goes up to 2x. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and patrons. I want to thank the patrons who have made it possible for me to transition from my former career to doing this, which I love. And I have a private support group at patreon.com slash go keto with Casey, where depending on your pledge level, you will get 20 videos a month from me called snippets, a handful of patron only live streams on Crowdcast, a handful of patron only group sessions on Zoom. I am no longer doing taking new one-on-one -on -one for that upper pledge because my calendar is full. So thank you very much for patrons. And now let's see what we have here. And I'm just going to dive on in. The first thing I say, Kara Z writes, when triglycerides went down, I told the doctor I was done with statins. I said I wasn't concerned with LDL. So far, there has not been any pushback on that. That's great. And you are so correct. You clearly have done your research. For those of you who don't know, triglyceride and HDL are really what you want to look for in, in a, a cholesterol blood test. It, and you don't always get those. Sometimes you have to ask for them. So what you want are triglycerides, which are inflammatory, and HDL, which are anti-inflammatory, to be about the same. So if triglyceride is 62 and HDL is 62, yay, even better if HDL is higher than triglyceride and higher and higher, even better. So, and the LDL, like I said, there are two types. There's small stickies, which can be problematic and big fluffies. I, I'm, I'm overloaded with the big fluffies. They are benign. They just kind of bounce around having a good time. Okay. B. B Gray says, I replied by emailing her the research paper. So see, I, I'm assuming you're talking about a medical provider. Pastiche House, is it true that you need to stop keto every couple of months so you don't become intolerant of carbs? Your opinion, please. Uh, no. What? So I don't become into I am intolerant of carbs. I already am intolerant of carbs. That's the whole point. People will ask me, will you go back to eating regular food? I do eat regular food. I just don't eat carbs. I don't need them. They are not an essential macronutrient. Fat and protein, essential macronutrients. We must consume them by mouth to get the amino acids, which our, our cells require. Carbohydrate, not an essential macronutrient. We do not have to have one carbohydrate. Well, every food, essentially, has all three 
carbohydrate, protein, and fat. But essentially, plant-based foods have are high in carbohydrate, and animal-based foods are low in carbohydrate, high in fat and protein. No, I absolutely would not. No. Okay. Would you say if you've given up alcohol that it's a good idea every couple of months? If you're in recovery from alcohol, and I almost consider myself in recovery from carbs, although I don't look at addiction like some people use the word. I think it's too strong a word. But anywho, would you every couple of months hang out at a bar and have a few shots just to so that you don't become alcohol intolerant? No, 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 no. I don't know. Who, who's making this stuff up? Because that's made up. Hey, Miko Staines. The snippets are amazing. One of my favorite perks. Thank you so much. Patricia Green. Hi, Casey. Yes, I told my doctor was on keto diet and she was fine with it. Great. Um, and Miko Staines writes, she's never gone off keto in seven years. No need to bring carbs back in if you ever don't want to. And Ginny. Hey, Ginny. Jenny Gold, a, a former patron. How, are, how many grandchildren do you have now? So good to see you. Esoteric Book Review writes, weights are so good. Weights are so good. Are you mean working out with weights? Resistance training is good. It's, you know, I, I work out of my total gym. It's very straightforward. I really enjoy it. It's already paid for. Not for body fat loss because exercise is not effective at burning body fat. It is effective at building up core strength, helping retain bone density, putting on lean mass. And as we get older, whether we're male or female, and, and I mean, we want lean mass and we want dense bones. Uh, Pastiche writes, I told her I'm intolerant to carbs. They make me fat. LOL. Thank you. It, our friend Jen in Minnesota writes, I'm allergic to carbs. When I eat them, I break out in fat. Claudette Zhishang writes, my sugar was 6.1, but had started keto for three months at that point. She still put me on, on metformin, but she wanted to put me on Ozampic shots. I said, nope, for the shots, I'm down 35 pounds and still going. Esoteric book reviewer writes, as I get older, I do more weights and eat adequate protein. Bethany writes, 42 pounds off in 10 weeks. That's awesome. Terry writes, oh my God, I have a total gym too. I love it. Ter Terish writes, Claudette, that sucks. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the doctor wanting to put you on things. I'm going to take another quick look at the poll. Okay, we've had 114 responses. I'm do you guys like this poll thing? I've never done it before. I've never noticed that I could do it. It is still the, no, now the top response is, yes, does your doctor support you following the ketogenic protocol? 32% yes, 20% no, 30% I haven't told them I'm doing it, and 17, they're skeptical, but okay with it. Again, you never know who you might influence. Yvonne Gilman writes, I've never looked and felt better. Okay. I love that you wrote that. I don't know or care how old you are. I don't care whether you're 22 or 92. When did we think that we would say or write in a public forum, I have never felt or looked better? I might have looked better when I was 22. I don't know about that. But I feel great. And I know I look and feel better than I did when I was 32, 42, 52. I know this. Okay. Thank you, Lily writes. Yes, I like the polls. Heather Amin writes, what is the name of the cholesterol test to see the different types of LDL? The one I asked for is called an NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance test. It's often, mine is not covered by our insurance, you know, my annual checkup is covered, but that's not considered necessary. But I paid the difference it was like $34. To me, the information is worthwhile, mostly because I'm asked about it, not because I was worried. Okay, so for those of you who wanna know, my most recent, my blood sugar was 60, my fasting glucose was 60, 
My triglycerides were 46 and my HDL was 125. Remember I said you want HDL and triglyceride ideally to be one-to-one -one, or if you can HDL to be higher? I announced that on the, okay, uh, Durham support group meeting. Let me give a couple of reminders. It, on Crowdcast, you can follow my public stuff on Crowdcast, but you can also find my schedule on my blog under my schedule. How clever, eh? This month, the end of this month, June 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern, Casey's Keto Connections will have Dr. Georgia Ede, who's a psychiatrist, a Harvard-trained, board-certified psychiatrist who feels strongly that nutrition and mental health go hand in hand. And then the first Tuesday of every month, the Durham support group meeting with Dr. Eric Westman and me helping moderate, um, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Again, you can find that at my schedule. So, and that's totally free, the Durham support group meeting. It is registered, but it's free. So I announced this at the Durham support group meeting and Dr. Westman said, you know what we call that HDL number? We call that the Methuselah number. You're gonna live a thousand years. Uh, hey, Gail writes, hey, I'm sorry I'm late. That's okay. And Sylvia Wolf asks, what does it mean when doctor says you are no longer insulin resistant? That means you've won the lottery, baby. Insulin resistance, not, okay, not the, the commercials that they're all over the place to take for, you know, they say, I'm a type two diabetic, but I'm lucky. My body still makes insulin. Type two diabetics are swimming in insulin. Type one diabetics don't make insulin or don't make sufficient. Type two diabetics, we are, a, it's a glut of insulin, which is the problem. Those medications actually can make you at higher risk for things that you would never be at risk for if you didn't take the medication. So insulin resistance is when you've got plenty of it, insulin, but the body just doesn't respond anymore. It's like the boy who cried wolf. Oh my gosh, there's too much glucose in my blood. And insulin's job is to push the glucose out of the blood and into the cells stored as fat. Are, are we, let's put some things together here. Insulin glucose out of the blood and into the cells stored as fat. So, oh my gosh, now there's more glucose. Oh my gosh, insulin comes out, pushes the glucose out of the blood into the cell. You know, after about 25 or 30 years of this, pancreas says, you're on your own. The insulin simply becomes ineffective. Think of it as an internal version of when you need more and more of a medication to have the same effect. You know, maybe you used to take you know, one Advil and you got rid of your headache and then you moved on to two and then you moved on to prescription Advil and you moved on to migraine medication. And now you need three migraine medications to get the same effect. So if you are no longer insulin resistant, that's fantastic. It means your body responds properly. That's great. Congratulations. Uh, B. Gray writes, Dr. Ede, it's E-D-E, -E, Dr. Georgia Ede author of book on proteins diet. No, that, that's Michael and Mary Dan Eads, E-A-D-E-S, different people. Dr. Georgia Eid is a psychiatrist. And uh, Michael and Mary Dan Eads wrote the book long ago, like 30 or 40 years ago. They were way ahead. Um, Dr. Georgia Eid. Again, if you look at my blog and you can see in my cat, my schedule, you'll see. And it's also will help you get registered. Adonna Kuhn writes, I'm 71 and feel absolutely great, down 75 pounds from size 22, 24 to 10, 12. Proud of myself. Again, when did we ever say we were proud of ourselves? A round of applause for those of you who are Girl Scouts. A round of applause. Trish writes, yes, thank you, Victoria. Um, and she's really great, Dr. Georgie. She's just great. I mean, it's just nice talking to her. Um, Trish Fields Newbert writes, having a Father's Day cookout tomorrow. Have a new vegan and vegetarian attending, but both want to eat keto. Any suggestions? You know, keto for a vegan, that's tough. Vegetarian, well, it's tough as well. Non-starchy vegetables, maybe dipped in some full-fat ranch dressing to satiate them. Uh, the vegetarian maybe would be okay with deviled eggs. A vegan, probably not. That's a tough one. Actually, one of my Go Keto with Casey 
no, Casey's Key to Connections episodes, I'm hoping to have uh, a vegetarian who's been very successful. He is vegetarian by culture and uh, religion, and he was has been very successful. Alan Tooth 48, Casey, that was a great analogy of insulin resistance. Love your, your show so much. Been watching you for years. Well, thank you, Alan. And Debbie Longnecker writes, I'm 68, changed the way I eat in 2016 to keto and now mostly carnivore keto, lost 80 pounds during crazy 2020, gained 10 back, losing again, feel amazing. How can doctors argue with this? Again, I think some, some are projecting. It's not sustainable means I would never be able to stick with that because I really love my fill in the blank, pasta, bread, pretzels. I should do another poll. I'm thinking uh, we were going to have the Go Keto with Casey Cruz to Alaska in 2020. Obviously, that didn't happen. Dr. Westman, Amy Berger, Jackie Eberstein were going to be my guests. And I've been asked, are you going to put together another cruise? I'm actually wondering about having an event at a resort as opposed to a cruise. A nice resort. What would you think about that? Some people are land lovers, and they're not going to get on a ship anyway. I don't know. I think I'd like that. So I need to put some planning into it. Okay. All righty. And Teresa McKeever writes, keto is the only way of eating that makes me feel good. You know what? I felt miserable. I felt weight, literally weighted down and kind of just out of it. When, I, when you're a sugar burner, he's kind of going to this. People laugh about a food coma. It is kind of like a food coma. And my taste buds were in a coma. Yes to resort, writes Debbie. Okay, I'll let you know. It, it won't be in the next couple of months. I take some planning, so probably 2022. And I'll have to see. Um, hey, Liz, resort would be cool. Um, okay. And maybe one that, you know, provides massages and yoga classes and fine restaurants and meeting rooms where we can talk. Or just hang out on a giant patio. Okay. Keto equals good health. That's a lovely way to wrap this up because we need to tell our doctors, thank you, doctor. I appreciate your concern. I feel great. And you may note in my file, if you wish to cover yourself, that you have warned me off of this, but I'm not going to be warned off of it. I feel good. My blood tests will bear it out. And check with me in another year. Okay, uh, Claudette writes, my blood work was good, but I but I know my I'm insulin resistant in the morning sometimes, so it's getting better. But it takes time, but I feel much better and down two sizes. Excellent. Hey, Judy, my friend from Hopkinton, Iowa. Judy's a farmer. I mean, a real life farmer. Toting bales of hay and all that stuff and running after errant calves who, you know, ran away from. She's she's lost 130 pounds. Imagine being a farmer. 130 pounds heavier. And she just changed her food. All right, friends. Thank you very much for allowing me to be part of your Saturday. And... Um, uh, it really means a lot to me that that I am privileged to be part of this. I want to thank my patrons again and make it a meaningful day. Don't fall for hype. If a food product has a keto on the label, it's almost certainly not because they can write anything they want. And um, ignore the front of the packaging. Look at the nutrition label on the back. Net carbs? No, that just means eating more carbs. You do what works for you. I can only share what worked for me. I will see you next time. Be sweet. Just don't eat sweets. Waka, waka, waka. <laughs>